inappropriately attired. <laughs> He's waiting for a discount. Don't let him kid you. <laughs> well, the answer it's a very good question about selling. I mean, we it's not our natural inclination to sell. And on the other hand, uh, and and we have held the Washington Post stock since 1973. Uh, I've never sold a share of Berkshire, having bought the first shares in 1962. Um, and we've held Coke stock since 1988. We've held Gillette stock since 1989. Held American Express stock since uh, 1991. Um, we generally sell, well, I will, we would sell if we needed money for something else, but that has not been the problem in the last 10 or 15 years. That 40 years ago, my sales were all because I found something that I liked even better. I hated to sell what I sold, but I, but I also didn't want to borrow money. So I uh, would reluctantly sell something that I thought was terribly cheap to buy something that was even cheaper. Uh, that those were the times when I had more ideas than money. Now I've got more money than ideas, and that's a different equation. So now we sell really when we think that we've, when we're reevaluating the, the economic characteristics of the business. We've probably had one view of the long-term competitive advantage of the company at the time we bought it, and we may have modified that. That doesn't mean we think that the company is going into some disastrous period or anything remotely like that. We think McDonald's has a fine future. We think Disney has a fine future, and there are others. But we probably don't think that their competitive advantage uh, is as strong as we might have thought, as we thought it was when we initially made the decision. That may mean that we were wrong when we made the decision originally. It may mean that we're wrong now, and that it, and that their strengths are every bit as uh, what they were before. Uh, but for one reason or another, we 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 think that the strengths may have been eroded to some degree. I, a classic case on that would be the newspaper industry generally, for example. I mean, in 1970, if Charlie and I were looking at the newspaper business, we felt it was about as impregnable a franchise as could be found. We still think it's quite a business, but we do not think the franchise in 2002 is the same as it was in 1970. We do not think the franchise of a network television station in 2002 is the same as it was in 1965. And those beliefs change quite gradually and, and, and who knows whether they're precise, you know, whether they're right even, but, but that is the reason in general that we sell now. If we got into some terribly cheap market, we might sell some things that we thought were cheap to buy something even cheaper after we bought lots and lots of equities, but that's not the occasion right now. You know, I said it was a mistake and it, to sell it, and it was a mistake, and I just reported that in the interest of uh, candor, and there were some reasons why I thought it was so something we, I didn't think it was, I didn't think, obviously, that it was any great short sale or even a great sale, but I didn't think it belonged in the list of eight or ten of the businesses, of the very few businesses that we wanted to own in the world, and I would say that uh, uh, that that particular decision has cost you mm, in the area of a billion dollars plus. Charlie? You want me to rub your nose in? Uh, you're, you're, doing a, <laughs> you're doing a pretty good job by yourself. <laughs> by, by the way, that's a good practice around Berkshire. We do rub our own noses in it. Uh, we don't even need the help of the Kenters. <laughs> My guess is that with 23,000 locations all over the world, I think it would be extraordinarily difficult to separate the real estate business out from the franchising business at this point. I just think the problems would be horrendous. Certainly, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to sell it and lease it back because uh, <clears throat> you would not end up with more value, in my view, by doing that. Uh, uh, and spinning it off in a real estate trust or something with operating in 100 plus countries uh, and with all of the franchise arrangements, I think it would be a huge, huge problem. I would not want to tackle it myself. I think you should look at McDonald's as being a, a very good business, but the one that will continue in its present mode uh, uh, vis-a-vis the real estate.
Yes, I, I would say that in the food business, you would never get the total certainty of dominance that you would get uh, in, 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 in products like uh, Coca-Cola and, and uh, uh, Gillette. Be people, people move around in the food business from uh, where they eat from. They, they, may, they may favor McDonald's, but they will go to different places at different times. And somebody starts shaving with a Gillette Sensor Plus is very unlikely to go elsewhere, in my view. And uh, so they, they do not, you, you just, you never would get in the food business, in my judgment, uh, uh, quite the inevitability that you would get in, in, in the soft drink business with a Coca-Cola. You won't get the inevitability in, in food that you will get in a single consumer product, um, you know, such as, such as blades. I mean, it, it, if I'm using a Gillette sensor blade today, the chances are I'll, I'll, I, I will try the next one that comes out, obviously, but I will not fool around at all in between. If they're happy with the product. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not expensive. It's 20-odd dollars a year, you know, if, if you're a typical user. And you, if you're getting a great result, you're not going to fool around, whereas a great many of the decisions on fast food as to where you eat is simply based on which one you see. I mean, convenience is a huge factor. So if you are going by a McDonald's or a Burger King or a Wendy's uh, and you happen to be hungry at that point, or if you're traveling on the road and you see one of those signs up, you're probably going to stop at the, uh, you may very well stop at the one you see. Most people want to vary what, where, they, where they eat as they, as they uh, uh, go through the, uh, the week or the, the month or the year. And, and they don't really have any great desire to vary their, their soft drink the same way. It's, just, it, it's, not, the, it's not the same thing. But, uh, so there's no knock on McDonald's at all. It's just the nature of the, of the kind, of, kind of industry they're in. One of the ones I admire most is, is McDonald's. I had fun once at a major university when I said I thought McDonald's succeeded better as an educator than the people in the university did. And what I meant was McDonald's hires a lot of people who are quite marginal at the very start of their working career. And they learn to show up on time for work and observe the discipline. A lot of them go on in employment to uh, much higher jobs, and, and they've had an enormous constructive effect about educating into responsibility a lot of people who were threatened with not making it. So I think we all owe a lot to the uh, employment culture of McDonald's, and it's not, uh, it's not enough appreciated.